We're going to test a few of the main circuits on, uh, on a charger. Now some of the basic circuits apply to all the different styles of chargers that you may see. One of the first things we're going to look at is going to be the, the heat sink and diode set in this, in this car. We're going to ahead and use our, uh, our ohms meter here. We're going to attach the clip to the ground side of the, uh, of the heat sink. We need to detach one side of the transformer from the diodes. And then we're going to do a flow test. So we, again, we have the clamp on the ground side of the heat sink, and we probe the positive side of the diode, and you can see we get no motion out of the meter there, and we do that on both the diodes. Now if we reverse the continuity, and we put the ground clip onto the positive side of the diode, and then we probe the heat sink, you will see the, the, the ohms meter move. And what that's telling us, uh, what, what the diode does, and we'll go ahead and try the other diode as well, what the diode does is allows current to flow one direction and stops current from flowing the other direction. It's like a one-way valve. Okay, the next thing we're going to test here is the uh, capacitor. And that's, uh, the capacitor stores up and then releases the charge. So we need to disconnect one side of that. And we, we touch our positive probe to one side and our negative clip to the other side. And you'll notice the ohms meter will kind of jump momentarily. And then as we reverse the polarity of the probes, you'll see it jump again. See that? And we re reverse again and probe it, and it will jump again. Okay? And that's the capacitor storing up and releasing its charge. Okay? Now the next thing we're going to test is the amp meter here. We have to disconnect one side of the cable as, as well to test the amp meter. We should have an ohm continuity through that amp meter. That tells us there is flow through that amp meter. Now right here is the fuse, and we should have flow between all three posts of that fuse. Usually when a fuse blows, it discolors this clear lens here, but not always. So we want to probe that and make sure that we have good continuity there across the fuse. Now we're going to test the DC cord. Now if we probe the negative side of the DC cord with our clip, and then we, we uh, touch this end of the DC cord, which was attached to here on our amp meter, we should have continuity. Okay. Then if we go to the other side of the DC cord, right here, on the ground side of the heat sink, we should not have continuity. Okay. Now let's move our ground clip to the positive side of the DC cord, and we'll go ahead and probe this connection here on the heat sink. We should have continuity. Let's come to the ground side where it attaches to the amp meter, and we should not have continuity. Okay, now all of those little tests have been on the DC side of the charger, on the DC side of the transformer, and all of those component pieces have shown us to be in good condition. So now we're going to flip to the AC side. Okay, now on the AC side of the charger, the AC cord comes in here, the green wire goes directly to the, the case ground, the white wire comes up and attaches to this terminal here, which at that same terminal is the white wire that runs to the clock and one side of the transformer. Okay, now the black wire comes in from the AC cord. The black wire comes in and attaches to this terminal right here, which there is nothing else attached to that terminal. On the back side of the timer, there is a set of points. When those points are closed by turning the dial timer out in the front, it makes a connection from the black wire, the black AC wire, to this terminal here. On this terminal, you'll see the black wire to the clock, and you'll also see the other side of the transformer. To bypass this clock, 
we create a jumper between the black AC wire here and this terminal. That will bypass the clock. Okay, once we have verified that all of the pieces in the charger are intact, have correct continuity, and if we need to, bypass the timer. If we have determined that all those pieces are intact, that both ends of the cable are intact, both the DC and the AC ends, all of the connections are correct. If we've determined that all that is correct and the charger still doesn't work, that tells us that the transformer is bad. There is no test for the transformer. We simply have to test all other components and verify their functionality. Okay, we're, we're examining here a, a typical golf cart motor. This particular motor, the, the field coil and casing has already been removed from the, the armature here. Uh, this particular motor has access ports to the brushes which make them much easier to examine and or replace. The first thing you want to look at here, uh, this brush holder, if you can see that tin piece there, that's what the brush slips into. Um, we can already tell right away that this brush is severely worn. Once it gets below the height of the brush holder, that's, uh, that's time to be replaced. So now to replace that brush, whether this, uh, this motor is in or out of the car, you just pull the spring out of the way like that. Go ahead and detach this screw. And you can then uh, grab a hold of the cable that's attached to the brush, just kind of pull it out and remove that brush. And now you can see that that brush is severely worn, extremely short. Now if you look down inside, this brush holder here, you look down inside, you can see the commutator on the end of the armature. And as we rotate that, you can see that that copper, that commutator is made out of copper. And you can see how that commutator is kind of blued. And as we rotate it farther and farther, we can see that there is a burn spot on this commutator, and it's right there. And what that means is that this motor has been hot loaded and burn. So this commutator, this motor will have to be rebuilt. Okay, then to install the new brush, let's say this motor weren't bad, let's say that commutator weren't bad. To install the new brush, we just reverse the procedure. We go ahead and put the end under the screw here, screw that down tight, slip the brush into the brush holder, and put the spring back over the brush. And repeat that. Of course, there's, there's four brushes on every motor, so we need to repeat that. We have a problem in the motor, most likely. Okay, go ahead and stop that. Okay, the way the forward reverse mechanism on an easy go works is we have a cable that comes off of the output on the negative side from the controller, and that goes into uh, the bottom post on the forward and reverse mechanism. Now as you move the lever on the forward and reverse mechanism, it moves a cam on the back side. And what that does is it allows current to flow either from this bottom post to the post on the left hand side of the car or from the bottom post to the post on the right hand side of the car. And, that, and, and those posts are then connected directly to the motor. The other two posts, depending on whether it's in forward or reverse, are just a looped circuit on a on a DC electric motor, basically to make the motor run, you have four posts. You have an A1, an A2, an S1, and an S2. To make the motor spin, you put current between an S post and an A post. Whichever two you put, it, you put the current on doesn't really matter, but one S post and one A post. And then you loop between an S post and an A post. So in effect, what this is doing, it's creating a loop on one side and it's putting current, the negative current, on the other side. The positive current to the motor is coming out of this cable here and going directly to the motor. Okay, um, what varies, as, as I was showing you here, we have negative current in, and then as we depress the accelerator, we get a variable negative current out. As we depress the accelerator, that current rises. 
Okay, what causes that to happen as we depress the accelerator is this controller. Now, the way we um, vary the output of this controller is via a potentiometer, which is right here, and it's connected with these two wires, the black and the white wire. What a potentiometer is looks just like this. As we depress the accelerator, it moves this arm here, okay? Now, inside of this, uh, this box, this PV6 box, is a potentiometer like this, and this is just like a stereo volume knob on, on a radio, on a stereo, and as this is turned, what it does is vary the ohms resistance between these posts here. That is fed into the controller, and that helps determine how much output comes out of this controller. Now to test this, we disconnect these two cables here. We probe those with our ohms meter and we take a reading on that. Now any car that's got a black colored, a black anodized controller, this reading at rest will show less than 500 ohms. Now as you activate the potentiometer from rest to full acceleration, this will range from less than 500 ohms to over 5,000 ohms or thereabouts. Now on many club cars and many other cars that have, instead of a, a black anodized controller, they have a, a silver anodized controller. This, instead of ranging from, from 500 to 5,000, it ranges from 5,000 down to 500, so you can test that as well. If for some reason you're not getting a good output at this terminal here, if for some reason you're not getting this good output like this, then you can go ahead and test your potentiometer with your ohms meter. Okay, we're going to check the low amp circuit on an old style easy go. So it's a little bit different than that uh, low amp circuit on the newer style that had the controller. You can see that this, this car does not have a controller. It has uh, down here uh, what we call a wiper board with uh, button contacts and those button contacts feed via these cables back to some resistor coils. So that's just an older style controller. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put the, the, the clip side of the probe light on the positive terminal and we probe the negative side and you can see we have full light there. Now the way this system works on the solenoid on the low amp circuit, we don't have a direct connection from negative to the negative low amp post on the solenoid. This wire is switched through the forward and reverse mechanism. So. It, the wire comes from the negative through the forward and reverse mechanism through the key switch and to the negative terminal on the solenoid. Okay, so to test that circuit you would wind backwards from this point to the key switch, through the key switch, through the micro switch that's on the back side of the forward and reverse mechanism and to the negative post. Now the positive side is switched, so if we move our, our uh, clamp over to the negative terminal on the battery, probe the positive terminal, okay. Now this is the positive terminal on the solenoid, and if we activate the, the foot feed, you'll see the, the uh, positive current come to that solenoid. Now that positive current travels down to this wiper board where there's another micro switch. From that micro switch, it travels through wire, through the cable, to the positive terminal on the battery. Okay, so that would be our testing cycle down here on the bottom side and up to here. And as we activate it, we get away. Okay, now on the high amp side, the way this works, the current flows from the positive terminal of the battery down through this wiper board, up from the wiper board to this side of the solenoid. It flows through the solenoid to the forward and reverse mechanism, through the forward and reverse mechanism, back to the motor. Now the forward and reverse mechanism works the same on this old style EasyGo as it did on the new style EasyGo. What, what I mean by that is the forward and reverse mechanism is designed on one side to determine which direction the current flows. On the other side, it loops between 
two turn mounts. Okay, what varies the speed on a car like this that has, um, it, that it's a mechanical system, a uh, non-controller, non-electronic system. Um, the wiper board has five button contacts on it and it has what we call a wiper contact. As you step on the accelerator, that wiper contact moves from the first to the second to the third to the fourth and to the fifth contact. At the first contact, the current passes through uh, the primary wire here in this bundle of wires and goes through, back in the back of the car, goes through a series of, of five resistors. As it goes through those resistors, those resistors consume some of that energy and uh, blow that energy off in the form of heat. As you move to the next contact, as you depress the pedal farther and it moves to the next contact, it passes through only four of those resistors and therefore blows off less energy in the form of heat and so forth. And as you get to the last contact, the cable it passes through is clear at the end, which bypasses all of the resistors and goes directly to the motor. So the motor is then receiving the full amount of current. Now one other piece, okay, one other part of the vehicle is um, this so-called overdrive. Now this is a, a dealer installed item. Some cars come from the factory with a quote overdrive on them, but very few. Uh, most of them are dealer installed. Uh, this solenoid, in effect, when it is, uh, when it's activated, when the solenoid, when, when the current is made complete between the two low amp terminals here, it closes the circuit between the two high amp terminals. Those two high amp terminals, okay, they're, they're connected to uh, the two of the high amp terminals on the motor, which are the field coil terminals. Okay, so when this solenoid is activated, what it does is it short circuits between those field coil terminals. What that does is cause the motor to spin at a higher RPM. Having a high speed solenoid or an overdrive attached to a motor is hard on that motor and it will cause the motor to prematurely fail. Okay, um, we're looking at an old style club car with a, a, a multiple solenoid accelerator. Um, these are the five solenoids that are, that are just back behind the batteries here. This is the micro switch box which is straight down here on the chassis. On a club car, when you depress the accelerator, it moves this piece here. Now this is, is what's called a slide. And inside this box, there are five micro switches. As this slide moves and activates those five micro switches, they're connected uh, via the cables to the five solenoids. Um, similar to an easy go system with the uh, the uh, wiper board with the finger contacts. Instead, this closes multiple solenoids. So when you activate the first micro switch, it closes this first solenoid, which is the, the main circuit solenoid, and that's, that just activates the whole system. When the second micro switch closes, it activates this solenoid, which is, allows the current to pass from this bus bar through the solenoid, through all of these resistor coils, and out through a cable that's here to the motor. As you activate the third solenoid, activate the th third micro switch, it activates the third solenoid, which allows the current to pass from this bus bar, through the solenoid, and through just two coils. As you activate the, the uh, fourth micro switch, it activates the fourth solenoid, which allows the current to pass through this solenoid, through one resistor coil, and out the cable to the motor and as, a, and as you activate the last it activates the last solenoid which bypasses all the field coils and goes directly to the motor and I'll show you how to test that now on the car. First thing we're going to check is um, now on the solenoids on the low amp circuit of course you have uh, two sides to each solenoid you have the negative side and then you have the positive side on this club car circuit uh, the negative side is just a loop the positive side is the side that's switched, and that's the current that runs through that, that box that, that has the five micro switches in it. So first of all, we're going to check the negative side. So go ahead and attach on your, on your uh, probe light, attach the, uh, the clip side to the battery last positive, 
and if we probe the battery last negative, we'll get our 36 volt light. Now go ahead and put the car in gear, and on these solenoids, the ground loop is a yellow cable. Now as you probe the terminal that that yellow cable is attached to, be very careful that you don't touch any other metal objects under there. See now if we probe the first one, we get a light and go to the second solenoid again on the yellow wire terminal. You get a light and go to the third and fourth and fifth and we should get a yellow, or I'm sorry, we should get a light every time we probe one of the yellow wire terminals. Okay, now if we want to, so we know that we have ground to all, or we have negative current to all of our solenoids. Now to check the positive side, we'll go ahead and connect our, uh, uh, the clip side of our probe light to the negative terminal and we go to the first positive terminal on the first solenoid, which is a green wire. Now as we depress the accelerator, we should hear a click and then we should get a light. And there it is, and there's our light. Now if we go to the next solenoid on the positive terminal, there's a red wire. And if we de depress the pedal a little bit farther until we hear our second click, there's a, a light on that one. Now as we go to the third solenoid, it's a white wire. As we depress again a little further to the next click, we get a light. Now that's the same for the rest of the rest of the solenoids as well. And as you noticed, as we close the second solenoid, when we close it, let's, let's back up. When we close the first solenoid, that just activates the system. When we close the second solenoid, the motor starts to run. Okay. Okay, um, we, we're going to test the, the uh, high amp circuit on, again, on this old style club car. So the first thing we'll do is we'll put the clip end of our probe light on the positive terminal and we'll probe this white wire coming into the, uh, the main solenoid, the solenoid that activates the system. As we move the forward reverse into forward, we get positive, or I'm sorry, negative current flow into this white cable. Now if we probe the other side of that solenoid on the bus bar here, as we step on the accelerator and activate the first micro switch, we should get current flow into this bus bar. Now we don't because the solenoid is bad. So what we're going to do for testing purposes, now if this car had come in not running, we would have found the problem. And what it is is this first solenoid, because as we close that solenoid right there, we don't get any flow of current. Okay, so what we're going to do to test the rest of the circuit is we're going to bypass the solenoid. Now this is not something that should be done to leave a car running this way. You can bypass it for testing purposes and it's fine. The car is live now. Yeah, so by bypassing the circuit, um, whenever the car is put into gear, the system is hot. Okay, now, when we probe this, our, our bus bar is now hot, okay? Now, as we close the second solenoid, it activates this side of the circuit, and you can see we have a dim light. putting so much current into the motor. That's putting a reduced amount of current into the motor. As we depress the accelerator farther, the amount of current that is dispersed through the solenoids becomes greater, clear up to a full 36 volts, is then dispensed through this white cable, through the forward and reverse, and to the motor. Okay, now if the car operates but uh, as, as you're accelerating, it doesn't accelerate smoothly. It seems to have a jerk. There are two possible problems. Um, the, the first possibility is that you have a, bi a bad micro switch, which would be down inside this aluminum box down here that I showed you earlier. Um, and if one of those micro switches is not activating correctly, remember this test that we did by probing 
each individual micro switch, or I'm sorry, each individual solenoid and depressing the pedal until we close that solenoid. Okay, this is telling us that the micro switches are working because we are dispensing the low amp electricity to the, the solenoids. Now, since we go through this and we determine that all the solenoids are being switched. Now let's say we have a car that doesn't accelerate properly again. It has a, let's say, a dead spot in it or it accelerates erratically. What we could have is a solenoid that as it's being activated is not making continuity between the bus bar and the resistor coil. That's a possibility as well. Okay, what we're going to test now is we're going to see if these solenoids are, uh, the solenoids and the resistor coils are varying the amount of voltage that's being transferred from the batteries to the motor. The easiest way to do that is with a, a, a digital voltage uh, meter, uh, digital, di digital multimeter, and it's set on um, DC volts, and we connect the uh, negative probe to the battery last negative and the positive probe we can connect to the bus bar and in effect you can put it anywhere on the bus bar that you want. Um, put the car in, in forward and as you depress the accelerator what you will see is each time you hear a solenoid close you will and, and hear the motor RPM spin wind up a little bit farther you will notice that the voltage will increase. It'll start out at roughly 25 volts when the first solenoid closes and it'll range uh, over the next three solenoids up to about 36 volts. So let's, let's watch this. There's the first solenoid closed. Goes up to about 25 volts. And then the next solenoid closed goes up to about 31. The next solenoid goes up to about 33 volts. And then the final solenoid, it goes up to 35. Now, if these, batteries, if these batteries had a better charge in them, it would go up even a little bit farther. Now, I'll show you there's actually another way you can test this with uh, just your test light. And the easiest way to do that is, is attach your, your uh, clamp to your battery last negative, put your probe on the bus bar, and go through the same process. And you can watch the brightness of the light. See how bright that is? And it gets brighter. Each time you hear a solenoid click, you'll notice the light gets a little brighter. And then as we back, as we back down on the accelerator, you could hear the solenoids close down, and you could see the light getting dimmer per each close. The way you would tell that one of the solenoids is bad is as you as you closed them in order. As you heard a solenoid close and watched your light, if your light did not get brighter, that would tell you that that solenoid was bad. And testing it with your digital voltage meter, you would notice that your voltage would not increase as that solenoid closed.